Good morning again. Another fresh day and some more jobs to do on the car. Um, I said I would video the progress, so I'm going to try and do that. Um, yeah, so I do realise that I did change the Hedgehog, the final stage resistor and the heater blower. I did change that the other day and I didn't really document it, um, like the how-to. So I'm not really running a, a how-to guide as such. I know I did that with the actuator, the door actuator. Um, but it's not... It's The thing is, I'm, it's just me and holding a mobile phone and doing changing a final stage resistor um, is a challenge in itself. Um, that means that if I try and hold the mobile phone I mean I, I can sh I can hold the phone to say you know, this is where the part is this is how you do it um, but now that I've done the job and I feel more uh, don't worry about the trailing wire uh, and the one on the other side <laughs> I'll explain that um, yeah I, I can share some tips with you that I got from changing the uh, FSR uh, now for those who don't know what the FSR is it's a resistor which looks, it's got prongs on it, that's why it's called the Hedgehog. Um, and it controls the heat, heating, the heater, the climate control and whatever. It controls the fan blower and all that stuff. So if, you're, if you find that at lower fan speeds, uh, your air is kind of uh, hunting, like it's... Uh, instead of being a constant flow, then chances are uh, your final stage resistor is on its way out and it needs changing, which is what I did. Uh, and that has cured the problem. Now, on a right-hand drive car, the method of getting the FSR out is very different from a left-hand drive. With a left-hand drive, you have the glove box here, and it's a pretty simple case of taking out the glove box. It gives you lovely access into the, into the centre console there, and it makes the job um, I would say quite a few factors um, easier than it does on a right hand drive. So on a right hand drive I didn't initially think I'd need to take this this part out uh, but you actually do. You really do. Yeah, take this out. Make sure you take that out. You might think you don't need to because just getting that panel out gets you access to the final stage resistor inside there. Uh, but trust me, you you will you will want to take this out. Uh, now, well, it's just a case of taking this off. Um, there's two clips on either side. There's a pop-out rivety thing down there. That at the back, if you can see that behind the clutch pedal, that round thing. Um, I probably need to shed some light on the subject. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah. There's a round grommety thing there behind the clutch pedal. Um, it's just a case of t turning that. If it's hard, just turn it with some pliers. Just It screws out. And then there's a screw here. Uh, you might have another couple. I think I've got a screw missing in there. Uh, well, I've definitely got a screw missing. Uh, and then you'll find that this will just come out and it comes out of there and that leaves, uh, it, that leaves access in there. To get the final stage resistor however there is a plastic housing which sits in front of the resistor that has to come off that's the bitchy part of the job because it's two screws one at the side one at the top the top one is really hard to get to because uh, it's hard to see even putting your head in there and trying to get up there you, you're breaking your back you're breaking your side you're pulling muscles and well you are if you're my age and unfit but so two tips one take this out because when you're on your back, lying in here on your back, it's so much handier to be able to put your arm in the hole here that this leaves, and then you put your arm in and it allows you access inside there. It's so much easier to do it with that off. So tip number one, make sure you remove that. Tip number two, disconnect the battery. Okay, it, nothing happened to me. But I have seen it happen with other people on videos where a screwdriver has hit something inside here, metal to metal, and it's caused sparks. Disconnect the battery. And my best advice I can give you, which I've not seen anybody else do, um, but I would do it if I had to do another one. 
take the seat out. Trust me, I, I had the seat all the way back. I had the back all the way down so I could lie on the seat. But then of course you're lying and then it goes down and it's very uncomfortable. So for the sake of undoing two bolts at the back, two nuts at the front, and just whipping the seat out, um, yeah, mine, it, it, you, then you've got like all this comfort here. Apart from you've got a little, you've got a little step here where the seat goes, um, where the seat attaches to. But that's nothing. It's, it's luxury by comparison, and it makes the job so much easier. I thought I was going to have a really bad time putting the screws back into that housing, and had I not taken the seat out, it would have been a nightmare. But I did take the seat out, and then it took me about five or ten minutes to get the screw in once I'd located where it's supposed to go. Take the seat out guys, honestly, it's worth it. It's five minutes to take the seat out. And the way I did it on this one, um, it's electric, okay, so you have to, oh, make sure if you're gonna take the seat out though, that you have a diagnostics tool, um, or you know somebody who's got one. So I'll explain that in a sec, the obvious reasons. Well, it might not be obvious, but. Uh, so this is electric, um, so obviously, I needed to keep it connected so before I disconnected the battery uh, I just rolled this forward got access to actually I did the front ones first I rolled the seat back took the two nuts out then I rolled the seat forward took the took the two bolts out at the back okay that that kind of freed up the seat of course it's still stuck in there pretty well until you pull but then I took the back of the seat down with this and took the back of the seat down so it went starting to go flat and then I pulled off this head, this headrest. Uh, it's not really a headrest, is it? <laughs> we call it a headrest, but it's not. It's to stop you breaking your neck in a car accident. So yeah, it's that. <laughs> it acts as a headrest, though. But yeah, uh, yeah. So you pull this out, um, and that way, that make, makes the seat easier to come out. Bring the seat forward again. Uh, I, I brought mine fairly forward, you know, beyond the vertical. And then I just pulled the seat out, um, and that way you'll get you'll get access in there nicely. Um, as for getting the hedgehog out itself, once you've got access to it, um, there's a little plastic tab which sits over the top of it to keep it clipped clipped in. Um, you get a flathead screwdriver and just pull that to the side, and while you're doing that, you can either get your fingers or a pair of pliers if you're if you're able to just to pull on the plug attachment and then just pull it out make sure when you put the other one back in that it goes in snug you have to make I had to grease mine on the sides to get it in um, make sure that the lugs on both sides of the FSR are seated with the with the connections on the back make sure it's seated all the way in and that you'll know if it's correct because the clip will go back on if that side tab clip doesn't go back over the top and hold it down it's not in properly and you cannot leave it like that because otherwise you're going to be driving on bumpy roads it's going to start working its way loose and that thing gets quite quite hot and it will melt your plastic and it will cause damage so make sure it is fully snug in do not be satisfied until it's snug in there uh, that's about the only advice I can give um, to make up for the fact that I didn't show you how I did it. Um, anyway, yeah. On to today. I've got a few small jobs to do. We had a big job done on the car yesterday, um, which I'm really happy about. Finally got the new windscreen in. Uh, so this is the brand new windscreen. No more chips. In fact, this windscreen is mint right now there's, there's nothing on it I don't know how long that's gonna last uh, but those wires hanging down is just from my uh, dash cam which I had up there we've had to take those off obviously um, and essentially I need to leave the car for about 24 hours for the adhesive to dry fully um, before I start pushing back on the windscreen, but I, I think it's gonna be okay now. It's, I've left it overnight. It should be fine. You know, I'm, it's, I'm just being over cautious by leaving it 24 hours, but I'll leave it for a little while. Um, I'm not gonna force anything onto the windscreen with any degree of 
strength that's going to push the windscreen out uh, but that glue will be okay now they say after half an hour you can you can drive the car but they do recommend leaving it for 20 24 hours so yeah thank big thanks to Damien at Autoglass uh, for coming and doing this yesterday very professional job some use of amazing tools um, I'll put some pictures up at the end of the video to show you um, some of the tools that we used some of the clever gadgets that we used uh, one in particular which I thought was really impressive was you know they use suckers to pick up the glass those sucker things well they had a big one on the side of the on the side window here a huge one and it had a like a, an apparatus like kind of a bit of scaffolding on it and this arm came along like a metal arm and it held it went onto another sucker which held this side of the windscreen in while he was at the other side of the car controlling the other side so the arm was doing the work of the second guy so that kind of meant that that tool was helping him fit this whole windscreen on his own it's a one-man job because of that that thing and it was really impressive to watch watch it get placed in there um, but yeah brilliant job really happy and I just hope that my next stone chip which is probably inevitable doesn't happen for a long 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 time uh, yeah I had a couple on here one of them was in line of sight so I had to get it done otherwise it probably would have either failed MOT or at least been an advisory right so let's take a look let's walk past Riley and Merlin hi Merlin <laughs> right today uh, having my tea um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you these details the tea bag I don't it's not a normal cup of tea it's a uh, it's it's white organic tea so I, I, I leave the I leave the tea bag in anyway this is today's job so we have the air filter <laughs> the, the air filter we have the oil filter uh, Phoebe Bilstein uh, it, it's just so you know I've asked my my ex-girlfriend uh, lives in Germany uh, and yeah I've asked it's Phoebe okay it's Phoebe Bilstein not Phoebe Phoebe um, K&N obviously guaranteed for a million well it's not obvious but it's guaranteed for a million miles so it's yeah there you go didn't even see that but there you go million mile limited what <laughs> limited it's limited right to a million miles I think we're gonna be okay it's pretty much saying it's lifetime of a vehicle uh, designed to increase horsepower and acceleration eh, eh, I don't know maybe eh, I, I don't know if I'm gonna find a difference but you know I only got this because I, I, it's reusable there's even a warning sticker you get that says do not throw this away yeah you can I think you just give it a wash in warm soapy water or something um, I'm sure I'll find that out uh, but yeah, it's it's ecological, of course, because I'm not disposing of any more oil filters anymore. So I'm quite happy with that. And of course, six NGK laser platinum spark plugs. Quite like these because uh, these are the 3199. This is the serial on these. Uh, if you can see that. Uh, if you can't, it's BKR six EQUP 3199. Let's see if I can uh, show you this. Uh, right. Uh, I know this, this phone's pretty bad for this. So there you go. It's got four four tips. I first time I've seen this. I don't know if my current pl plugs have got that. I'm assuming so, but I don't know. Uh, so I don't know whether that creates four small separate sparks. I guess it would, or one big one. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the four small ones. So you're guaranteed a spark on there. I think these plugs gonna go for. A, I think the lifetime of these plugs is a hundred thousand kilometers is it which is 60,000 miles I'll have to look that up um, yeah so I'm gonna be putting these in today spark plugs air filter oil filter and the big box which of which is the cabin 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 I don't know what cabin is which is the cabin filter the pollen filter um, which goes in the engine bay. Also, I have, if we go in here, I've got my oil here, which I bought direct from Castrol. 
uh, from the website because Halfords, <laughs> no surprise here, Halfords had these four litre bottles for £51. Buying directly from Castrol, they were 37 for the same thing, the exact same thing. So, um, by buying two of them, I got eight litres. I saved about 25, 26 pounds. Uh, it, only, it only took a couple of days. So, that's the oil. The other thing that came yesterday, I'll show you down here, is my jack, which as you can see, I'll just move it this way. It's a Sealy, goes with my uh, axle stands, same make. Two ton, low entry, and as you can see, it's, it's not only low entry, but it stays low for all this all this length here which is going to enable the jack to get right under the car uh, quite a way yeah because once I've got my suspension on next week the car it will drop a little bit and yeah I just want to make sure I've got a jack that's going to get get under there it has an entry of 74 mil 7.4 centimeters I think my car is currently 11 centimeters off off the ground uh, to get to that front jacking point I think it's 11 it's probably going to drop to about 9 after the suspension's on just at a guess somewhere around there 9, 9.5 uh, so that jack's going to really really come in handy the only thing I don't have at the moment it's arriving today is the oil catch pan but it's not a pan it's not like an open uh, uh, like a what do you call it like a plastic pan that just catches the oil it's not one of those it's a box uh, a sealable box where the oil goes in and then you you seal it off and then you can carry it and then you can dispose of it um, correctly you're not having to wander around with a plastic um, what do you call it not not a tub but you know what I mean it's like one of those plastic things you use in the sink for washing up basin yeah a basin thing you're not having to use one of those um, to, to carry around and spill oil everywhere so this one seals it up and it holds 10 liters which is fine um, the most that's ever going to come out of this car is about six six and a half liters so 10 liters is, ab is absolutely fine so I'm waiting for that to arrive today uh, so in the meantime I'm going to put all these bits on that I've just showed you get that done uh, and then we'll get the car jacked up on the axle stands waiting to go oh and also while I've got the car jacked up and I'm going to be underneath to take the drain bolt off um, I'm going to take off the underneath uh, cover the metal the shroud that, that's covering the bottom of the engine the sump I'm going to take that off and I'm going to be replacing the um, oil temperature sensor which I can show you in here if you come with me into the workshop uh, here it is so I'm uh, going to be putting this on and basically that just goes up into the car so it's just these three bolts now the reason you ca I can't do this as a separate job is because of, uh, naturally when you take this out uh, all the oil is going to drain out anyway so I'm going to drain the oil out by the the proper method first and then I can take this out because uh, this is the perfect time to do this while I'm undergoing an oil change um, yeah so what's happening is when I'm turning on the ignition and the engine starts off um, every time I start the ignition the oil light comes on in orange for about five or six seconds and then it switches itself off that's just a uh, letting you know that the oil temperature sensor is not functioning anymore uh, so that's going to go in as well. So that's another job uh, for today if I can hopefully get it all done Right, I think that's enough rambling from me and I need to get on with it. Oh, the other thing is uh, When I bought the final stage resistor uh, Similarly when I bought this um, I made sure to get a good make uh, so if you're gonna buy um, an oil temp sensor don't skimp out on 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 the cheap brands because it literally is a case of you know 
if you buy cheap you pay twice because it's gonna go again soon um, this is OEM brand uh, Hella so go for a Hella yes it's gonna cost you a bit more but it's gonna last you the proper lifetime of what it should be lasting you and not um, not break down again and then you have to do the whole damn job again because you put some cheap part in there get a Hella same same as I did with the final stage resistor um, it was a Hella as well but it was it was bare B-E-H-R and Hella together um, I think I showed that on my previous video so yeah it, it's it is a bit more expensive but not a, it's not a lot it's it's worth it so yeah get that done um, and while we're on German pronunciations <laughs> that is Mele it's pronounced Mele in German I've been saying male uh, but no it's Mele Mele and Phoebe Bilstein that's just so you know what you <laughs> what you're talking about uh, right anyway there we go I will start and let you know how it all goes I think I'm gonna do air filter cabin filter first and then I'm gonna do the sparks and then we'll get the car jacked up I'm ready for these two it's gonna be a fun day and it's early in the morning well I say early 10, 10 o'clock 10, 10 a.m. and Merlin's gonna be supervising are you the foreman on site today Merlin? <laughs> what are you looking so shy about? Oh yeah, you, I know what you want. You want your belly rubbing, don't you? Eh? Yeah. Yeah, big softy. Give me five. Give me five. Give me five. <laughs> okay. Right, guys. Um, I'll see you later. Do you know what? <laughs> this is going to seem really stupid, <laughs> and I don't mean it to sound condescending. I don't mean it to sound like. I'm being patronizing or anything like that um, but if you're an E46 owner I'm gonna sh show you how to open the door <laughs> I know that sounds really weird um, but there is a, 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 a yeah I'm sure most of you already know um, but what my, my point of, of saying this is that you you're not pulling the handle you don't pull the handle out right because that's just gonna make it's going to make it a lot harder to open the door, make it make it uh, feel like it's um, it's it's pull, it's resisting you somehow. The handle actually pulls up. Um, you you'll see. I don't know if you can notice it there. It pulls upwards. So if when you come to open the door, you pull out and slightly up, you'll find the door will open a damn sight easier than if you just try and pull Jesus look I'm pulling straight now I can't even get the door open oh, I can't and that's me pulling straight out so if I do a, a slightly higher up then it will open but it will be harder to do it but if I if I pull on the door handle in this direction upwards piece of cake so I know you just walk up to the, the car door and you pull it and it opens anyway right um, but I'm just telling you that if you pull up you'll you'll have less resistance on the handle and I don't know you maybe you save some wear and tear what do I know but it's just a stupid it's just a stupid thing I just wanted to mention for no particular reason um, yeah so yeah if it sounded <laughs> condescending uh, yeah here's a guy telling us how to open our car door um, yeah I don't mean it that way right so panel off this off this off uh, uh yeah we're going to be taking this off obviously first take the panel off and then putting this back on that's going to give us access to the coil packs where we're going to be removing each coil pack and then replacing the spark plug i hope that one at the end is not going to be a bugger to get to um yeah and then of course the uh, the oil filter goes in there now to change the oil filter you need a 36 millimeter socket uh, which I did buy quite a while ago I've not had a chance to use it yet and it should be somewhere 
in amongst all my junk. There's the old hedgehog look. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where the hell have I put that? Underneath the headlight. I've got my old BMW caps. I bought some new ones of those a while ago. There we go. Here it is. All right. I, I haven't even opened it yet. But uh, yeah, as you can see there, 36 millimeter, 3 8 square drive, low profile oil filter socket. And this will suit the Beamer down to the ground. There it is. So, <clears throat> if you've got the 3 8 or half inch, isn't it? I'm not sure. And that should just sit nicely on there. And that lets, lets you get the housing out. Uh, with the old filter, I think you get the new. Well, I think you do. Yeah, I think with the old filter, you get a new uh, rubber seal that goes around here as well. You get that. Uh, but yeah, without without that, yeah, without this, yeah, you're going to be using big mole grips and all sorts of stuff and trying to turn that. Good luck. <laughs> it's not that you won't. It's just it's going to be a lot more difficult. Yeah, this was a few a few pounds only, and definitely worth the investment. Okay, I'm gonna get started. Truly now. Right, make a start. So first thing is gonna be the cabin filter. Uh, this is Fram. Never heard of them before. And so yeah, BMW and Alpine A46, blah, 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 blah. and X3 for some. Yeah, X3. So. Nice and easy at the back. One, two, and oh, I've got to go around the other side for this one. And three. And we're just going to pull this out. -na 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 -na. And you'll see on this there are two little lugs, um, and they just slot into that little crevice there. That's easy. This could do with a clean out to be honest. I'm gonna give this I'm gonna give this a wipe in there. Uh, I could just take those four screws out at the back and pull it out, but I think I can do it in place. Uh, what's this? Yeah. Oh that just goes out. Okay. Uh, is that broken at the back or no it's not. No it's not. Alright, so yeah, there's just a little pipe there. I'm going to give this a good clean out before I put the other one in. There's no point just putting this one in like this. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to clean it and I'll be back. Right, one thing I forgot about, about the final stage resistor thing, is when I mentioned about taking the seat out, that you'll need a diagnostics tool or something afterwards. That's because down here, if you have a electric seat, I think there's a connector anyway, even if it's not electric, but under there, there is a yellow connector and of course once you remove that and put the seat back it's going to throw up an airbag light on the dashboard so you'll need to plug in a diagnostics tool to get that turned off again it won't go off on its own um, so yeah just to beware if you do take the seat out you will get an airbag light coming on um, yeah okay that's it unless perhaps uh, no, even disconnecting the battery doesn't help, I don't think. Well, I don't know. If, if you put the seat in the right position to take it out and then disconnect the battery, and then disconnect the cable after the battery's been disconnected, and then put the cable back in and then reconnect the battery, maybe you can avoid that. I, you might be able to avoid the airbag light coming on. Anyway, I didn't, just in case you can't avoid that. Um, yeah, you're going to need to get that turned off. Right, all right, so that's had a little bit of a clean and I'm just going to replace these tubes back in. I've cleaned them a little bit. So these go in and they face that way. Sorry, the bad Steven Spielberg would not be uh, hiring me for any... Uh, yeah, anyway, so these have got little toilet seat flaps on. <laughs> that's not the official name. Uh, and they face outwards, uh, so that just goes in like that and then you can tell where it goes anyway because there's a little notch there 
which lines up with that. Uh, BMW certainly make sure they have every detail there. Uh, so there's one on that side. And come on, Riley. Come on, boy. And then there's one on this side as well. So I'm going to plug that, that in as well. Get in there. Okay, this one wants to be a little bit more stubborn. Yeah, I don't think that's gone in quite properly. There we go. I, I can get it from underneath. Because the lid's got there, that toilet seat thing's got caught up on something in there. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. That's in now. I just needed to give it a little bit of a fettle. Just clear out some stuff. Right. Okay, so there's the old one. It's gone a little bit crinkled now. It's a bit darker. Uh, and here's the new one. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this one says made in Germany, the old one. And the new one is uh, unknown, so therefore China. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did skimp on the cabin filter a little bit. This one's got the official BMW logo on it. This one doesn't. It's not. This one is not uh, absolutely OEM. Uh, probably should have gone for that one, but it's you know cabin filter. It's not the biggest deal in the world, I guess. Uh, yeah. So. Pretty sure that's just going to go in like that and get seated. It's not quite seating on the other side, as you can see. Okay, it does seat in, but then it pops out again. It's, I don't know if it's that plastic that's sticking up. Uh, this plastic here. See, this is why I find it hard to film what I'm, what I'm doing because most times you need both hands. There we go. That's down now, but now it's up on that side. This is what happens when you buy outside of OEM and you get third party products. Um, this is what you get. This is the price you pay. Once the cover goes on, it will pump that in there anyway, but still, I, I would prefer a nice seal fit. I'm going to fiddle with this for a while and then I'll get back to you. Alright so because on the cabin filter I cut a corner, I, I didn't do it intentionally it's just that I just searched for cabin filters on the internet and this is the one that came up and I bought it. Um, I didn't think about going up BMW. I don't know. I bought good makes for everything else but this one I just I didn't think it was going to make a difference but clearly it does. Obviously, third-party companies don't really give as much of a toss as the OEM stuff. So the problem is, uh, it's not going to. It's not going to be a perfect fitment. I've got it in. It, it, when it goes in on one side, it doesn't on the other, and vice versa. So it's not going to be a perfect fit. It's not going to go in there. And if I push in the middle, it's just going to crunch up the uh, the air elements. So yeah. I'm just going to leave it as it is. So before I put this top back on, I'm going to give that a clean inside and out. Um, and then that's going to go back on and we're done with the uh, cabin filter. Right, on to the air filter next. So four parts to this. Uh, we've got the filter itself. We've got this, which has got sticky back on the other side. I don't know if I'm going to even use that, but we'll, we'll see what happens. And then the obligatory k and stickers. And of course, in case anyone, you take it in for a service, you're going to put, want to put that on there so that the garage doesn't... Um, discard the air filter because it doesn't need to be discarded uh, right so we'll leave that up there so got a clip at the side got a clip on the front there I'll just get my fingers in there there we go and again I'm gonna need two hands to get this off so there's a clip down there this has to come out as well um, and of course, I think these two bolts are going to come up, do they? No, they don't. Uh, clip at the back. 
must not be getting the clip at the back here. Come on. And then there's another one there which is off, and that one there which is off. And then I just have to pull this tube out and the whole thing will come out and then we're there. See you in a bit. Right, so I've taken this uh, front element off. Uh, just three push-up pins. One there, one there, one there. And it's just these pins. So you just get a little pair of pincers like these along those pliers and then just pull that center bit up and then the whole thing will they'll pop out that frees this and then to get it off the off the math um, you've got two side clips uh, there and there and then that should come off uh, again I need both hands but on, underneath there you can see I've already got a pipe across filter that's going to be coming out obviously <laughs> it goes without saying so yeah I'm gonna need both hands for this give me a sec okay that's it right that's off uh, so this is all okay. I don't have any vacuum leaks under there because this is a recently changed pipe at the back so I know that that's, that's all good. The one that you can see behind, see those two screws? Well behind that, the vacuum tube, that, that's brand new. This is, this is absolutely solid so no vacuum leaks. So here we've got the old pipe across. This is reusable and washable as well. Um, so Technically, there's nothing wrong with this one at all. Um, I just wanted to change it over. I can give this one a wash and I've got a spare one, which I'll never need. So, I'm gonna give this one a quick clean up, just get rid of all the gunk in the bottom of there. Um, and then, I'm gonna put this filter in. Alrighty, Aphrodite, here we go. So, I've given this a little bit of a clean, got all the bits and pieces out, there's only going to be uh, a problem. Uh, and then there's this, of course, uh, which has got my grubby finger marks over it. And then you have in here, which I just checked to make sure it was clean, and as you can see, it is absolutely mint. Now, this round here, this gap round here, that's where this goes. It sits in here, apparently. Perfect. And that will provide a much tighter seal than we have before, I guess. Or either that or the lip on this is smaller than the lip on the other one. And this compensates and provides that seal. So we're going to peel that backing off. Again, I'm going to need both hands. Put that, that uh, seal around there. And then the air filter is just going to go... It's just going to pop itself in there, really. This is so... Oh God. Right, there we go. Okay, so that just sits in there like that. Um, yeah, so... I'll get that done, and then we'll get it all back together. Alright, so that is now in place. I'm going to create a nice seal, and now we're just going to get it all uh, put back together. That's... It's all nice in there. Going into the map sensor is all fine. Um, yeah, engine needs a good clean. The looks of things really dirty, really dirty. I don't normally have it this dirty, but it's been a while since it's had a good uh, clean out. So we'll get, I'll have to do that at some point. <coughs> um, yeah, but in a couple of weeks, uh, I'm going to be going on a trip, uh, which is going to be around. Uh, what? A thousand miles all round, I think. 500 there, 500 back. I think. Well, it might not be that much. I think it's three... No, I think uh, 392, possibly. Yeah, I might be getting my figures mixed up with something else. Yeah, I think it's about 400 miles. So, 800 mile round trip. Going to be going on a couple of weeks. So, by then, of course, the car will have the service done, the, the new oil and the new suspension on. So, she should be good to go. And that will be her first um, test with all that new setup on. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to quickly get this back together <coughs> and then um, move on to spark plugs. Yeah, 
slight risk in those got to make sure when you take them when you put them back in and whatnot you're not drink uh, causing any drunken threads or whatever mm. and take all the coil packs off as well anyway here we go right air filter on uh, all done stickers on obligatory stickers you know when you always think you've got it straight and then you put it on and it's a little bit off <laughs> anyway yeah this is back on one two and three make sure those these pins are popped right the way down not, not sticking up or anything and then you're good to go right next thing is to lever these little things out and take this panel off first take this off and then take this side off um, and then put the oil cap back on again and then we're good to, gonna be uh, good to go on the sparkers um, yeah no I'm good to go I was just wondering whether to do the oil change first and then do the spark plugs but uh, no I think we'll be okay so uh, yeah I'm gonna get these panels off okay so I've got the covers off there's a little bit um, of a pain could you on this one when I put my little socket ratchet thing in once this had come up to a certain height I couldn't get the ratchet out it was difficult but I did manage to pull it out and then uh, got that out this nut I've lost it <laughs> it fell into the car and you know these cars have got covers all over the bottom of them so it's somewhere uh, down there so I'm gonna have to fish that out so here's the coil packs uh, this one has an earth on it so it's just simply a case of un uh, undoing this pulling the coil packs off on each one um, see that the, there's different numbers here L and K L and K L and then you've got this one right at the back that's going to be the pain uh, not getting the thing out it's just making sure the spark plug goes in straight without drinking the thread because if you mess up the thread on the spark plug that's bad news yeah so it I'll have five plugs experience by the time I get to that one to get a, a feel for the um, of how the plug goes in uh, and I've got the spark plug tool here I think there's, there's one there one there and one there so I've got three different sizes so whatever one I need I've, I've got <clears throat> um, yeah so I'm just going to grab a torch first because my mind's not going to rest until I can pull that nut out from wherever it is um, and it, I've got a, the long magnet thing but I may need to I may need to remove the bottom cover yeah it's a minor annoyance it's nothing major it's just a minor thing but it's a pain in the ass. I'm probably uh, able to find another nut like this anyway in the workshop uh, but I don't want that thing rattling around in there not a big deal shit happens okay okay so I've removed the first coil pack um, so it's just a case of these two bolts and once this is loose then you can pull this up this clip comes up you can see the where it goes that little hole there that will come slide up and then you just pull the connector out and the coil pack is here um, so just yeah it just comes up like that nice and easy to take out um, and then I've taken the first spark plug out with this long bar and the spark plug tool and there's my spark plug check this out see if I can focus that for you yeah it's uh, it's been through the wars it's mainly just a bit oily really um, but I'm just looking at the trying to look at the tips you'll probably be able to see better than I will they don't look they look too bad really I mean the car functions fine it's 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 doing okay but yeah clearly in time for a change getting this bar getting this bar down into that last chamber <laughs> oh buddy yeah I'm looking forward to that there should be enough room for it though we should be able to do it um, in fact those last two but that very last one my only concern is I, I need to put these spark plugs in without 
getting a, a thread crossed up. I mean, you would know. You'd, you'd meet resistance. You know, you would know. Um, but anyway, okay. So we're just going to pop in. Riley's having a kip in front of the car. Uh, yeah, he would. Uh, can you? T I mean, can you see why? I've got a dog here. <laughs> right. My toolkit has got that foam bit in the middle so that to stop the tool spilling from one area into the other. It must have blown and he's just laying on it. <laughs> While he's there laying on it. Merlin over there, Riley here, and then there's a, we've got two more dogs, Fraggle and Rusty. Rusty's the one on the number plate. The R is for Rusty and the dog obviously is Rusty Dog. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that's literally that number plate that is private it's it's for, it's it's a tribute to him uh, I rescued I rescued him from a dog shelter um, 1,500 miles away in another country and brought him here and he's having a brilliant life so yeah it's a commemoration to him anyway time to get the new spark plug on and find the old spark plug because it's got my bloody rubber on it that rubber bit that comes on the thing yeah, look at these NGK R5 BMW. I'm just wondering now. See, it's the same number on there. Look, uh, you might not be able to see that. Uh, it says BK BKR 6E QUP, and exact, that's exactly what we have here. BKR 6E QUP. Um, this one's actually got BMW written on it. So I don't know whether this is because it's been reserviced at BMW and they fitted those or whether these are the original plugs with the car. The car's done 140,000 miles so if these are the originals, wow, it's, yeah. I mean not only has it lasted well but geez, I know these NGK Platinums do last a, a, a really good long while but still it needs new ones so I've got to get on with it. Right, that's the first spark plug in. I've put it in fairly tight, but I haven't over tightened. So that's the last thing you want to do. You don't want it breaking in there or anything like that. That would be a disaster. But I've tightened it where I know that I could tighten it more if I wanted to, uh, but it doesn't need it. You can just kind of, I don't know. I think I just got a feel for it there. So we'll see if I'm right later on. So we're going to put the coal pack back in. So that goes in, make sure that earth wire is on the top there. I'm just going to pop that in, there we go, that fits onto the plug nicely, and then this will go in, uh, I think it's the right way up, I think I don't think it can go any other way, uh, hold on, I need to pull that up a bit more, sorry, yeah this is going to be pulled right to the top, so that these lugs can get into there. This is my first time doing this, so I'm learning this as well. So you can see that's pushed in now, the lug's in there, and then push down, and then just put the two bolts back in. So we've got one going in there, like that, and one going over the earth and in, and then that will be spark plug number one done. Five more to go. Right, onto spark plug two. I've taken the uh, the bolts out of the second coil pack and I'm going to uh, lift this clip up. Oh, my, last time I took the coil pack out first. Oh, this one seems to be... Uh, yeah, this one seems to... It doesn't want to come out as easily as the other one. Um, I'm trying to see whether this clip will come up. There we go. So that comes up all the way, and as you can see, that puts that little nut, uh, plastic stud there, and then you can just pull out like that. <sighs> yeah, okay. Right, two hands needed later. Okay, that came off fairly easy with two hands. My only, another little um, fear I have, if you want to call it a fear, is on one, I know it's going to happen on one of these back spark plugs, I know it will, is once I uh, screw the spark plug in and it's nice and tight and I pull this out, <laughs> the, the rubber bit inside here is going to stay down in there 
I just know it's going to happen. It'll be easy to get out if it does, but you know, I'm just, I'm just going to put that back in and then just tilt it to the side and then just pull. Um, yeah, it won't be difficult to get out, but you know. I just know it's not going to happen on any of these easy ones and it'll happen on the back one. Right, so I'm just going to pop this in. Pull, push down. There we go, that's in, nice. And I'm just make sure. I don't have a lot of space, maybe I'll need a bigger extension, but I'm trying to get away with just using this one uh, so that I know I'm, I've got that kind of room when I'm using the. Uh, or oh, doing doing the back plugs. I may can I use this. Isn't that what this is for, really? Isn't that what this is for? It comes to yeah, it comes to the same thing really. Okay, so just make sure that this bar is in the middle like that. And then start um, start undoing it, and that way you know you, your thread's going to be nice. See, that wasn't tight at all. That wasn't tight at all. So I'm going to get these out now, and I'll, uh, and uh, I'll be back when I've done pretty much all of them. I would say. So there you go. Okay, so that's all six spark plugs done. It took a little while because I was having. Well, I had an issue with this one um, in that the spark plug was really oily. So I think there's a seal gone in there. Uh, this is the state of pretty much all of them, except for I think this one. Yeah, look at this one. This one was covered in oil. You can see there. Uh, if, I, if I, the iPhone will even focus, maybe eventually it will. Right, start it again. So this is the spark plug number four. I'm I'm classing it as number six is next to the bulkhead. Number one is at the front of the car. So this is number four, fourth one in. So there's obviously a seal broken in there uh, on the rocker cover gasket. I think one of those round seals. But the spark plug pins themselves, the probes, whatever the hell they're called. Um, they're fine. Yeah, I'm in a bit of a mood at the moment. What it was is, and I predicted this would happen, by the time I got to the third, after the third spark plug, fourth, fifth and sixth and that, uh, the spark plug tool, which has got the rubber in there, the rubber, I wish this damn phone would autofocus. Um, every time I tightened the spark plug into the car and then brought this out, the rubber would stay inside the chamber with the spark plug uh, so yeah on the very last one inside there I had to just drop the spark plug in with my fingers and just um, tighten it that way and hope it went in to the hole okay and it did so I'm just gonna put the engine cover back on and then that's it that is the air filter cabin filter and spark plugs done and then I'm gonna get the car jacked up on axle stands to wait for the oil pan to arrive from Amazon which still hasn't come and then we're going to do the oil change uh, in the meantime I'll see if I can get the metal shroud off underneath the engine um, in preparation to replace the oil temperature sensor if the oil pan doesn't turn up in the next 45 minutes I'll just I'll find a pan from somewhere else and do it that way all right then, so I'm going to get it all back together and I'll be back. All right, so we've got a little snag. Um, this jack's amazing. It goes right underneath the car. Um, this is a Sealy, Sealy jack, you can see there. And it's the Yankee two-ton model. And it goes right underneath the car. If you put the handle down, it goes right in and right under. And then you can start jacking it up. And I've got it on the jacking things. So I was able to get underneath feel around underneath the metal shroud which I'll show you in a minute and I was able to find the nut that goes on to the the one that popped out from the back here so all this is now back together so the only thing that remains to do now is the oil change and the oil temp sensor oil change is easy oil temp sensor not really 
taking the old temp sensor out and putting the other one in, piece of cake. But you've got to get the metal shroud off. Let me show you. It's eight bolts, okay, 16 millimeter. That's it. The beast. Let me tell you, those bolts, whoever put those on, they are tight as anything. Um, it's one of those things where you've got to put an extension bar on your socket set thing and you're just waiting for the first thing to snap. It's that tight. So yeah, I put some WD-40 on one bolt just to try and see if I can work it free um, and see what happens there. Uh, yeah. So. The oil change is easy because the drain bolt is just here, so that's nice and easy to do. Um, but getting this off, which protects the sump, uh, is for some reason it's tightened to absolute buggery. I know it has a torque setting, can't remember what it is offhand, uh, but there's eight of these uh, two there and two over at the back. And it's the same on both sides and uh, you can see how far out that is it's quite compared to this one uh, but then again i think this has had some somebody trying to jack it up on here it's certainly been jacked up here normally i would jack it up on the subframe by taking this off first but um yeah no chance so i can't get this off guys i, I haven't got extension bars and stuff i don't want to damage any, any sockets or anything so well like and it wouldn't make sense to do the oil change without doing the temp sensor because to take the temp sensor out it's gonna you're gonna lose oil out of there so i mean you kind of could in a way you could take the temp sensor out later and catch all the oil into a clean basin and then pour the oil back into the engine you could do that but i'm not really wanting to do that so i'm gonna to have to find some other solution <laughs>